morning guys and girls I hope you're all well I'm just uh, making my way to the venue the car's parked up and it is 20 to 6 in the morning and we're going to do something just a little bit different this could be a short video or it could be a long video We'll just have to wait and see. But I'm taking you with me to do something very different. I'll see you soon. So here we are at the venue. It is the Mediterranean Sea. Now I haven't fly fished this area for nearly 20 years. But uh, we'll see how we get on. Uh, the sun is due to rise in about 40 minutes and that will spread a little bit more light on the day. My idea is that I'm going to fish fairly close in while it's still sort of twilight and just pull back a lure. Now the lure that I'm fishing is something that I've, I've tied up which I think might attract the fish. Uh, you'll probably see it a little bit better when the sun comes up. But I'm fishing a nine foot leader of uh, Segua, a saltwater leader. And I'm using a wet cell saltwater floating line. The rod is a 10 foot uh, fly rod, seven weight. And the reel is an old system too. So let's get a line out and see if we can attract anything. I'm going to fish more or less parallel with the with the bank to begin with. Casting will be difficult I'm sure, this is quite a heavily weighted fly. All I'm going to do is just strip it back and see if we can find something. The idea is that I walk along the beach, doing this all the way along, hoping to attract something. I have no idea what fish are in this area, or if there are any fish in the area. temperature was a fairly constant 21 degrees overnight which is approaching 70 about 68 and the water temperature is about 23 24 degrees around 75 so it's still warming up as we say the wind is southwesterly at the moment and due to turn from the south which will be from my back so say it's a weighted fly so I'm just letting it sink a little bit it's 
not that deep here, I don't think. Although there is a little bit of a drop off. Of course, in this sort of light, one assumes that the fish will be working on vibration more than sight. This beach is actually an urban beach and it's made up of natural stone that originally used to come down from a river and in the 30s that river was dammed so the river doesn't flow so frequently it's more of a spate river now when there's been a bit of rain as you can see there's quite a lot of weed along the water's edge uh, the sea was a bit agitated yesterday so it's brought up weed off of the bottom. I think I got hooked on the bottom then, so I'll just check the fly. Seems to be okay. fly line is a bit like a pig's tail hasn't been used for a long while although I have cleaned it and stretched it it'll take some time to straighten out I imagine I'm doing is just some fast strips back. And the fish will either come or they won't come. I'll have to wait and see. I suppose I'm only casting about 30 yards, something of that nature, till uh, it gets a little bit more light and then I can see what I'm doing. It's certainly sometimes since I've cast a fly this big and this heavy I'm sure if any local people see what I'm doing they'll either think I'm crazy or I have no idea what I'm doing and they can join the club <laughs> I haven't seen any surface activity so that doesn't mean a lot of course of course with this being a, a beach where swimmers and bathers come to enjoy the day it's not something that I can do during the day for obvious reasons well, I do have insurance. It's not something that I would wish to exercise. Judging by the sky over there, it's going to be a wonderful sunrise. Although we are on the coast, 
as you can see over there we're never very far away from mountains in this area I'm fishing quite high up on a bank of stones at the moment uh, when it's more convenient I'll get down a little bit lower and closer to the sea so far this session is a bit of a bust but then that's no less than I expected really so I know nothing about this area or about the fish that we're likely to encounter looks like I've got some weed on the fly let's get rid of that okay I've just shortened up the leader to see if this helps with the casting as you can see wind is getting just a little bit stronger whether that will help who knows I think the shorter leader has helped a little to extend it you may be able to see the boys that are out to sea there they are to show the boat owners that they're not allowed to come on the inside of those boys because of swimmers or surfers or whatever the case may be and it is an infraction that will incur a fine I have to say it looks so inviting and I'm sure there must be some fish down there somewhere let's see if we can get down a bit closer to the to the water here the biggest problem is going to be the waves taking my line away as I'm stripping it off so there you go there's the Spanish sunrise just peeping its head over that bit of dark cloud that's out at sea how beautiful is that Now time to put the sunglasses on. Okay guys, I've come to the other end of the bay. Let's see whether we have any better luck here. If anything, it's possibly a little more sheltered but by coming to the end of the bay it also means that I am not fishing straight into the sun which can only be good for you let's get a bit of line out, have a cast because it's the end of the bay and the wind is coming this way I think it's a little bit murky on the water here let's hope we can find something because so far it's been pretty uneventful so We'll just have a walk down there, a little bit closer to the rocks and see if it makes any difference. I think this is about as close as I can go because of the, uh, the back cast. There doesn't appear to be very much here either. I mean I say that but there's no fish here it could just be the way that I'm fishing the sort of fly that I'm using I really couldn't say 
if anybody has got any ideas then please leave a comment in the section then any help at all would be very very good so we just have to carry on here for a little while longer changing the retrieves seeing if we can get anything interested let it sink down and then hope for the best the sun is really getting warm now It's due to be about 31 today, I think, which is 80, 88, something like that, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, go on then, one more cast, see how we get on. Does a fisherman ever cast his last cast? Okay, that's it people. I think maybe as fruitless as this has been, I will try again a little bit later on in the summer. We are still in June and maybe the water needs to be a little warmer before uh, a fish come in close enough for me to reach with the fly. It was an interesting exercise and uh, I'm now going to make my way back to where the car is parked. Let me find my way out of here. That's it. And I won't say goodbye just yet because I have one little cultural experience for you. I'll speak to you in a moment. This is your little bit of culture. How great is this? This village has its own Roman excavation site. Uh, let's see if we can get this in focus. There we go. Now, this is uh, an uncovered site, probably from around first century to the fifth century AD which means that it's over 1,500 years old and they have uncovered what they believe to be a rustic maritime village and various parts of it show uh, part of a manor house and part of the fundamental business which was as a pottery so what I'm going to do is try and get inside where there is a guide and give you a quick tour showing you what's available to visitors. So what they've uncovered here is, as I said, part of a manor house and also some accommodation for the, for the workers, which were generally slaves, uh, for working in the pottery. Now they've also discovered certain areas which they think are drying areas for the materials that they made. Now they've also discovered a well uh, for the water that was required for the pottery and also a kiln for the firing. Now obviously there are certain aspects which they think as opposed to they know because over 1,500 years ago things were just a little bit different. 
but the materials that they made here, the pottery, were uh, roof tiles and also amphoras. Now those two things made the pottery very important and almost everlasting. Roof tiles because the area was expanding and also villages were springing up so roof tiles were very important. But amphoras, for those that don't know, are a very large urn and what is significant about them is that they don't have flat bottoms. Uh, just here you can see remnants of amphoras and as you can see here the the top is quite wide and then there are two handles one on each side of the neck attached to the shoulder of the pot which is then quite voluminous at the top and goes down to a pointed bottom. Now the reason for this was that when they were stored in the cargo ships the bottom layer was stored in sand to keep them upright. Then as the layers went up towards the deck they slotted the pointed amphora in between the amphoras that were already there. So it was an ideal way of saving space and stacking up certain parts of the cargo hold. Now what made it so important was that apart from the tiles, amphoras carried oil, wine, uh, salt products, salt fish and cereals and those four items covered about 90% of what you might call export to the homeland. Now, when they were emptied at their destination, they were then thrown away. So as you can imagine, it was a never ending requirement. I'm just gonna go over the other side of this walkway and you can see further excavation. And over there are more amphoras and pots. So, as I say, amphoras and tiles were a continual requirement. Uh, why it all stopped, I know not, but certainly it's a village that uh, existed so many moons ago. There you go, you can get uh, guided tours here. Uh, this gentleman is here all day. The guided tours are free and it's a great little commodity to have in this small village on the eastern coast of Spain. Okay, the guide here has just uh, shown me these last things that have been excavated in the last couple of months. And to the left you have bronze nails from the period. And to the right is what might have been used in a slingshot. Uh, it's a piece of uh, bronze and not quite David and Goliath, but uh, that would be used in a slingshot for whatever purpose. So these are the up-to-date findings in this excavated site. Great news and very interesting. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Speak again soon. So there you go. A little bit of culture because there wasn't a lot of fishing. So I'm going to make my way back to where the car is parked. I'm sorry, as I say, there were no fish, but we will try again later on in the summer and we'll see what we can do then. I hope you've enjoyed the video, as different as it was, without seeing any fish, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.